So hello, welcome. I'm Randy Levesque, if you don't know me. There may be some new faces out there. It's hard to tell with all the masks, but anyway, it's, uh, it's good to be here. And thank you all for coming out on this blustery day. Um, so it's a great pleasure for me to introduce Xi Lin Lee. Um, Xi Lin, I've known for more than 30 years now. He was an uh, alumni of this department. I had the pleasure of working with him when he was here. And uh, he wrote a, a thesis that really kind of opened up a whole new area of research in many ways. When he started working with me, I asked him to uh, look at the uh, immersed boundary method, which is a method that Charlie Peskin originally developed for modeling blood flow in the heart, still widely used. It's a very robust method for fluid structure interaction and for handling boundaries embedded in rectangular computational grids. But it has some accuracy issues, and so I asked Ji Lin to see if we could maybe improve that method a bit. Um, and he came up with a sort of whole new way of looking at things that we called the immersed interface method, because it applies not only to those sort of boundaries, but to other interface problems where you have differential equations with discontinuities on interfaces between different regions. And so he has been developing over, the, over decades now sort of more and more methods uh, along those lines where you can get very high accuracy by building the jump conditions of the differential equations into the uh, finite difference or finite element or other sorts of methods on a regular grid and makes for a very efficient sort of method. So he now has a book with uh, Kazi Ito on this topic and he's written many papers in that direction. He's also worked on a, a number of other things in regards to uh, fluid structure interaction, high order methods, uh, related computational techniques for many different types of problems. Um, he's been at the uh, North Carolina State University for most of his career. He's uh, been very productive there. And uh, I think today he's gonna talk to us a bit about some high order compact difference schemes related to fluid structure interaction problems. So, okay. uh, thank you very much, Randy. And uh, so the, uh, okay, so if you're gonna mind, yeah. Okay, so the, uh, I think I'm far away from uh, the audience, so it's okay take uh, uh, my mask away. Uh, so they, to me, um, the University of Watson is my second home. And uh, if I ask me if I have any choice, uh, uh, which I choose to live, I will stay in Seattle. Uh, that's uh, I like it the best, all right? And uh, also, uh, it's uh, glad to see uh, you know, the uh, older faces and the young faces. Uh, you know, the KK was in my committee. I, I think right now you are the only one and with uh, Randy, right? And uh, I saw uh, some uh, department uh, uh, chairs. And uh, so they, uh, as I, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, mention uh, uh, two topics. And I know everybody doing things uh, differently. So I try just uh, explain the idea. I try to finish it in uh, 15 minutes to an hour. And you can interrupt me, uh, you know, any time. And uh, so the, you know, the, I considered quite a bit and how to choose uh, uh, different uh, topics for the Boeing uh, colloquium, and uh, which he, I think is a big honor for me. I appreciate it, and uh, thank you, uh, the department, and uh, thank uh, everybody. And uh, also, uh, some research is topic is also tells us, uh, you know, at least the way I'm doing uh, research. And uh, so the title, uh, you know, I use two different colors. And uh, so the uh, the first one is uh, augmented method for uh, stocks dust coupling. It's like a computational uh, fluid mechanics problem. And uh, so this one may be more, uh, you know, uh, acceptable to most of the uh, audience. And the second topic is about high order, uh, Randy just mentioned. And uh, so uh, here is the outline. And uh, the first part is, uh, uh, suppose I have a fluid. And uh, I have a, a porous media. And uh, for fluid, it's incompressible. So uh, either we can use the Stokes equation or Navier Stokes equation. Then for the porous media, I just use a simply uh, Darcy's law. And uh, so the key uh, for this problem, they have different uh, governing equations on different regions. And uh, so the, there's an internal bond condition between uh, you know, the fluid and the, the porous media. So we have something called the, the uh, bond condition, which is called the uh, BJ or BJS condition. So uh, the, the main idea is a new strategy. And uh, how do we change this complicated problem? And the three Poisson equation. Actually, the, with Randy, we did something a long time ago for the Stokes equation, but uh, that's the interface. With the interface, now we just have uh, two different uh, uh, governing equations. Uh, so the, uh, you know, the new idea is uh, uh, you know, they, we introduce some like a, a generalized boundary integral method 
we introduce some new variables along the interface. So the problem can be decoupled. We get a faster algorithm and also very accurate. Uh, then the second part is uh, something uh, I did recently. And uh, many people probably know, and, uh, which is uh, in standard uh, textbook, and the uh, fourth order uh, compact uh, uh, scheme. But how about the bond condition? Because I, I, that's a hard way to do research. I go to the different uh, uh, talks and uh, seminars, and people say I have a fourth order and uh, for uh, diffusion and uh, equation, uh, equations. But I said, what happened if you have a Lyman and the Dirichlet bond condition, uh, the uh, Robin bond condition? He said, oh, I don't know. Uh, okay, so that's actually how do I uh, get it started? And you will see, I have a simple method, and can solve uh, many uh, problems with uh, uh, flux bond conditions. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first topic, uh, which I uh, think is uh, uh, very simple. So we have a, uh, uh, you know, the one is a uh, uh, fluid. And uh, so in this case, uh, we have a fluid that comes in, and uh, then uh, we have a uh, uh, pulse media. So the for fluid, uh, if the viscosity is small, and we use the you know, a Stokes equation. And uh, uh, if you wanted to include the more uh, you know, the uh, inertia term, and this is probably more, uh, uh, it's, uh, more practi uh, practical, then we have a never Stokes equation. Suppose it diverges free. So that's either in the uh, Stokes equation or never Stokes equation. And uh, in the uh, pulse media, so I did the, uh, in this example, we have many, many uh, particles. And the, the pulse media is uh, simply does its law. So we want to solve this, uh, uh, you know, coupling problems. Okay, so the, uh, you know, the, across the boundary between uh, the fluid and the pulse media, and uh, uh, in general, we have uh, the, you know, the normal velocity have, a uh, have to be continuous. So this is uh, uh, from the stress uh, relations. And we also, it's known that uh, the, the jump in the uh, stress is proportional to the pressure. So that means the, you know, the, uh, that's the, uh, another relation, which is uh, well known. And uh, so the complete condition is from the third one. So uh, in physics, they have several modeling paper and uh, in probably 1950s or 60s, and uh, by uh, Sussman and uh, uh, you know, Bieber, Joseph. So they said that there's a, you know, the uh, velocity, tangent, uh, tangent velocity, uh, tangential velocity is actually the discontinuous. So they call it tangential slip, and uh, uh, which uh, depends on some uh, physical parameters, uh, fluid uh, viscosity and uh, the permeability, and etc. Uh, so this is a, uh, uh, when you apply the tangent, uh, uh, you know, the uh, direction. But uh, this one is uh, complicated. So in many uh, research, they said, okay, in the Darcy's flow, and the velocity is very small. And they just ignore this term. So if you ignore this term, they get the uh, uh, Bieber and the Joseph and the Sussman condition. So it's called the BJS condition. And you will see in my numerical method, the new idea is really doesn't matter. So I can uh, deal with any condition and uh, with a high order accuracy. Okay, so the applications, there are a lot of uh, applications. And uh, uh, in, in general, for example, uh, if you have a soil and uh, the surface, and uh, so the, uh, that's uh, uh, kind of a uh, oil, you know, coupling, oil, oil reservoir. Uh, the, the one problem I know that there's a very strong uh, group in biomathematics, and uh, so it's a study that uh, cell deformation, and uh, you uh, many people and uh, KK and uh, know uh, Sharon Navkin, and uh, she uh, is my colleague, but uh, she was uh, a postdoc, uh, and uh, uh, here, and uh, you know uh, I was one, uh, I think uh, we uh, I was one year uh, you know earlier went to uh, NC State, so uh, with her we wrote the uh, two proposals, and the past proposals uh, to uh, you know the uh, NIH and uh, NG, uh, you know, mathematics science. So we get a uh, two funding. That's pretty good. E each one is uh, five years. And uh, so the one motivation is to try to uh, study the cell deformation and uh, with uh, different layers and uh, 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 you know, policy media, etc. And also, uh, I involved in several committees uh, in uh, a college for textile and the NC State. So they, they, they try to develop some, uh, you know, the five fighters clothes. And uh, you know, which you know, uh, you try to get the uh, insulation, and uh, they think uh, you 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 know you have water, they get in, you don't want to get the uh, socket, etc. 
So that's uh, uh, some kind of interesting applications. And uh, uh, you know, uh, I know there are a lot of students and how do we get started? And uh, so uh, we find this problem is uh, interesting and then we, we needed to do a, a you know, literature search. And uh, there's a, a lot of uh, literature about this one. And uh, uh, you know, the, uh, in theory, and uh, the William Layton from uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, he has a, a paper, it's a, a little a long time ago. I mentioned that this is not a totally new, but uh, that's something I think uh, uh, you know, easier to explain the idea. And uh, he uh, and uh, uh, several other he proved that uh, uh, we are positive of this problem. So that means uh, the solution uh, exists and unique. And uh, using the standard finite element method, Lance Muir Graham lemma, you have a system. Then you add uh, uh, Babuska and the breeze, right? And uh, but the, the, you know I know some people doing modeling. I, I don't think it's clear uh, if you have a full never source equation about the well positive. And uh, uh, you know, they, when I uh, did this work, uh, it's not clear to me. But uh, the technically, we still can do the numerical simulation. Uh, so they, that's actually the uh, interesting uh, problems. So in terms of a numerical method, very few, and mostly it's a finite element <coughs> method, and by uh, Max Gunzberg uh, groups. So they use the finite element method, and uh, basically it's uh, uh, like uh, you know the uh, you know domain decomposition. So we solve the uh, Stokes equation in one region, and the you know the finite element method is well suited for that. And then they solve for the Darcy's law. Then they have another uh, tool, very uh, simple. Then uh, so they, uh, they they use the unstructured match. So that that means the interface is aligned aligned with the uh, the boundary. So uh, they can take care of uh, you know the uh, interface conditions. So the one clever pa part is the build into the uh, interface uh, relation into the weak form. Uh, so the uh, I think the uh, uh, you know the uh, so. Not many uh, method about the uh, uh, finite difference method, and because of the iteration and the U1 is uh, uh, very slow and leads to a very large system uh, equations, and uh, it's a standard problem, and uh, so they, they use a uh, uh, method to solve it's uh, uh, generally it's very slow. And I went to the conference, I pre presented the talk. So for the simula simulations, they, they did uh, several hours, and for me, just uh, five minutes. And uh, the, the reason I'm uh, going to explain uh, less. Okay, so here is the idea. And uh, uh, so the idea is very simple. So they, for the, uh, you know, the Poisson equation, uh, so they, for the Stokes equation, I, I emphasize the Stokes equation, uh, it's a little bit easier. So you have the, this e uh, equation, we suppose the, the viscosity is a constant. So if you apply the divergence uh, operator and the mu is constant, you can take it apart. And because uh, uh, it's divergent, a divergence is free, so you apply the divergence operator, and this one actually becomes zero. And uh, I think uh, Randy told me about it, right? And we did uh, for the three uh, for the Stokes equation, but uh, th this time it's different. So what do we get? Uh, we end up with, and it's just a Laplace equation, and uh, uh, you know with the external force. Okay, everybody know how to solve Laplace equation, right? And uh, I can do the same thing, and uh, I apply the divergence uh, uh, operator and assume the viscosity and the permeability are all constant. So I get another equation, just a zero. So they, in other words, in both the regions, and uh, I just simply get a Laplace equation or Poisson equation, right? Uh, so that, uh, mathematically, but the, the solution, we mentioned that the, the pressure is discontinuous, and uh, so we do not know the, the jump in the pressure, and uh, we do not know the jump in the uh, normal direction. So the, the, the problem is not the well defined. And what do we do? Even though the original problem has a unique solution. So the idea for me is uh, similar to the boundary integral method. And uh, uh, you know, the, uh, Jerry Kawakin told me about this. So the, this problem can be written uh, equivalently uh, to the one equation. So the, this is a, a you know, single layer. So it's like a sort of distribution along the interface. And then you have a, a, a jump in the solution. That's the, the double layer. So that's a, a corresponding to the jump in the normal direction. Uh, one is the jump in the solution. One is the jump in the normal du uh, direction. So if I know these uh, two uh, quantities, and then I can get the, you know, the, uh, you can use a very simple method. And uh, for example, you can use the present method. It may not be uh, super 
accurate, but it's good enough. You can use a discrete data function. But of course, I have a better method. I can get a, a, you know the a, a, you know the more accurate result. So the why you write down the a Poisson equation in terms of the jump condition. So the other one you can write it down, uh, you know, uh, mathematically in terms of uh, a distribution. And uh, so that's uh, some things, uh, uh, some in some sense, is uh, similar to the boundary integral method. Except, uh, you know, I may not have a boundary equation, a boundary integral equation. I talked to uh, several people and uh, quite a few people doing, uh, you know, the boundary integral equation. So that's the idea. Actually, the, the first topic is about this idea. Anybody have any questions? And the, the rest is the details. Okay, so let, uh, if we don't have question, let's uh, move on. So then now I change. Uh, so I put this, uh, uh, you know, the jump in p and the uh, jump in normal deriv derivative as the two unknowns. Then I get a simple Poisson equations, and uh, I know how to solve this one. And if we don't want to use my method, you can use uh, a person's uh, immersed boundary method. It's just a few lines, and uh, you can get a, a very a good result. So the once you get the uh, uh, you know the velocity, then you just from original equation, and you solve for the uh, Laplace u because uh, from a uh, uh, space equation you get the Laplace u, and now I know the p, so I can get this one, and similarly for the uh, velocity we get this one, but uh, again you get two additional equation Poisson equation, and uh, for the uh, velocity in one uh, in two dimension that's going to uh, two scalar equations, three dimensions, and uh, three, uh, you know, scalar Poisson equations. And uh, so what I do is uh, I put uh, just uh, additional uh, three uh, interface variables uh, along the interface. But I know one, so I just need a five. I don't need a six. So the idea is very simple. By introducing and the five and the augmented variable, you can think of the unknown variable, interface variable, and they all are physical quantities. Then I can solve the three Poisson equation. So that's the idea. And the, the rest, it doesn't matter, it's the details. Uh, so the, uh, okay, so that, that's what I just mentioned. And uh, I can introduce a five and I can introduce a six. And uh, that's actually the sub to, uh, you know, the, what's the best uh, uh, augmented variable. So I choose a five and uh, uh, can we choose a six? And uh, how do we know the two systems are equivalent? Uh, anyone have a question? Yes. Uh, be clear. So you introduce these augmented variables, these new unknowns to the jump conditions. Yes. And then, what is what are the constraints that you're imposing that allow you to be? Okay, that's the next one. Okay. That's the next one. That's an uh, excellent question. And uh, so, uh, you know, the, we, we we have a new uh, five augmented variables, and you already we have a five. Uh, we need a five uh, equations to uh, close it up, right? And to close the system up. So the you know we have a. Uh, uh, you know the physical we know the uh, you know the uh, you know the stress jump uh, proportional to p. So this is the condition should be satisfied because when we decouple the system, I don't take care of this. So that's one equation. And secondly, you know the uh, you know normal velocity should be continuous. So this is a start flow, and this is the second one. And then the third one is a, a BJ or BJS condition. So you have a three one. But remember, I take the divergence, so I have additional degree freedom. So that means I get the uh, normal velocity and in the fluid, they should satisfy this equation. And then uh, in the Darcy's law, I do the same thing. So I sh that's a power equation exactly, right? So that's an excellent question and uh, the exactly the, uh, you know, the uh, slides of this, uh, uh, this one. Anybody have any questions? And the idea and the rest is uh, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, details. And uh, so that's uh, how we uh, implement. So when we do the implementation, and we have to solve three Poisson equations, uh, we want to take care. Of. We want to take advantage of a faster Poisson solver. So you know that uh, uh, you know the if you use FFT and you just need the old n squared, uh, uh, you know the complexity to get the solution. So that's the farthest. So if you ask me to solve the Poisson equation, what's the farthest? Uh, the first one is the FFT. The second one is the multigrade. And I, I don't know about the third one. <laughs> so the, uh, okay, so when you discretize, suppose we know Q. So that means the augmented variable, you put them together, you get a bigger equation. And uh, that's one, and uh, so the U, they have uh, N squared, and uh, actually it's uh, uh, three times N squared. And uh, then you do the 
you know, describe uh, discardation of the five conditions to match the system, right? But that's one dimensional law. So you do the linear interpolation, and you get a small equation for Q. So you put them together, that's uh, you get the big system equation. If you solve the big system equation, then you are done. But of course, uh, you know, how do you solve this system equation? And uh, I talked to several people. And uh, you can use uh, uh, two uh, ma different method. You can use, uh, uh, you know, the, this one is big. And uh, this one is small. So I do the short complement. And uh, I think uh, in graduate class, you know how to get the short complement. And uh, so you can get the short complement. Short complement is uh, a smaller system equations. OK, and uh, then, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the whether we should use the Gaussian emulation and whether we use the GMRS, and it depends on applications. So if you have a free boundary, bo boundary is moving, and uh, you change the time step, then you want to use the GMRS. But uh, for many problems, the interface is uh, fixed. And uh, uh, so they, the, the, the actually, the, the short component is fixed. So you just do LU, and I use SVD, uh, single vanity combination, and just do once. Then I get the uh, very fast solution. So that's the idea. All right. Uh, so the other uh, other things I didn't mention, and uh, you know, the uh, for people doing the numerical analysis, and the Colorado was a wonderful uh, referee. And I mentioned that uh, you know, I we can uh, how do we validate our code, because this problem is complicated. And uh, in, in 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 the literature, the only the deal with the straight interface. So one side is one quality, the other side there is no curvature in fact. But for this one, the uh, you know, the, uh, for the real applications, so they have a curvature. They have a curvature effect. So they, uh, we come up with the exact solution. And uh, so they, this is in the fluid. In the uh, porous media, it's very simple. And for this problem, they both have a jump in pressure and both jump in the velocity. OK? And uh, so uh, we just apply the numerical method, then check the uh, order of accuracy, and validate our code. And uh, so as uh, uh, expected, we get a second order in velocity. And uh, the, for the pressure, we get a better super linear convergence. And uh, uh, the reason, because you still have a boundary layer. I don't have a time, you know, I, I talk about how do we deal with a, a boundary layer, but at the beginning, and uh, we, that's what we used. And that's what we, uh, you know, uh, expected. We get a second order in velocity, and it's very fast. As I mentioned, the different conference, I talked to some people, it cannot be that fast. Then I said, uh, you know, which method you use? I said I use FT. They said no wonder. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions? And uh, uh, you know, you cannot just get a numerical method. You have to do some analysis. So they, how do we know? Because uh, for uh, when we use the three Poisson equation, I take the divergence operator to the Stokes equation and uh, to the uh, you know Darcy's law. So when you take the one more derivative, you are in the solution. You have a multiple solution, right? So how do we know that two solutions, uh, the systems are equivalent? And that's actually is not so easy. But the good thing is, uh, if you remember, what uh, uh, the uh, you know introduce the augmented variable, it's all from a physics. So which means if the original problem is well posed, and the least for the uh, transformed uh, equation, the PDE, and the, the, the solution exists. So the only question is whether they are unique or not. Okay. Uh, so they, uh, then, uh, you know, at the beginning, uh, we published this paper and just uh, for stocks and Darcy, and we get a very good review. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they said uh, uh, they, they, they didn't mention the problem, okay? And uh, so we get a very nice result and accept it very quickly. Uh, anybody have a question? So that's the kind of idea. And introduce the five augmented variables, then I solve the uh, stocks uh, and uh, Darcy, and we get a good result and expect it. No questions? OK, then we try to uh, apply the same idea to the never solved equation. So in other words, it's a long time, and we have a time variable, we have a inertia term, and we have a nonlinear effect. But when we uh, apply to uh, you know, never solved equation, it worked. And for short period of time, for long time, it's not so good. And then I, ch you know, then I double check you know, whether the two systems is good. And then uh, what do we find? And if we look at the check of the you know the differential equation, so the they satisfy uh, the momentum equation, so that's no problem. And uh, so uh, you know the uh, you know the, so which condition is not satisfied? Remember, we talk about the divergence free, 
And the divergence free in, in both regions, actually we allow the soft term in passive region, but at least the, the fluid. So the, this is, a, you know, come to this passive. I have a divergence uh, this capacity, and, uh, you know, the it to the Laplace divergence equal zero. And we conclude uh, the, you know, the solution is also divergence free. No, we cannot, because you need the additional condition, divergence free on the boundary, right? So in other words, uh, you know, farm equation, we cannot guarantee those uh, two systems uh, are equivalent. So the only thing that we cannot guarantee is uh, the uh, divergence condition on the boundary. So what do we do? And uh, what we did is just introduce another variable. So I put the, uh, you know, the divergence free condition along the boundary as an additional equation. So that means I have uh, five augmented variables. I have a six equation, but they are all physical. And in this way, you can prove that the two systems are equivalent. So if you get a solution from original one, you have to be the new one. And uh, if we have a, a solution to the new one, you have to satisfy all the original equation. So we get the uh, equivalence. And not only this theoretical analysis helps with, uh, uh, you know, develop the method for lever solve equation and also, you know, improve the condition. I mentioned that for pre pressure, we only get the uh, super linear. But if we apply this new idea, and we have a five equation, we have a six equation, what do we do? And how do you do it mathematically? And then you use uh, these squares. That's how often uh, we do. But uh, we know the uh, two systems are equivalent. So that's what I did. And uh, I proved that the equivalence of the two systems. And this is a, a, there's an open question. So whether we can introduce uh, additional augmented variables. So the two systems, they, 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 they match uh, exactly the same number for unknowns and equations. I don't know that yet. I don't know the answer. But anyway, so I use uh, these squares to do this problem. And for never solve equation, and this is a time-dependent problem. So uh, what we did is, uh, uh, you know, the pressure increment projection method, and I put the augmented system equation because I the boundary doesn't change, the time step doesn't change, so the you know the short component matrix is uh, uh, fixed, and I just do once, and then uh, you know every time just do you know the uh, uh, LU decomposition, you you you, you uh, we finish it on the first time. Okay, and uh, that's the idea. And uh, so I tried this one for time-dependent problem, and uh, similar to the previous example, and it's non-trivial, and uh, so, uh, uh, you know, they have a curvature effect. And uh, now you can see that, and uh, so we get a pretty good result, uh, and uh, the both the pressure and uh, the uh, velocity, and uh, this is the augmented variable. Every, 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 everything is the second order, because I do the second order discriminating. And uh, now the, th this is a five augmented variable. Uh, so this is a residual for the equation. Everything is a second order. And it's more, more like a magic. So you use uh, this square approach, and uh, we can prove the two systems are equivalent. And also we get a uh, uh, you know, complete second order accuracy for all variables. What, uh, pr uh, pressure is, uh, uh, this one we cannot prove, because you and the pressure, they have a boundary effect. But uh, after this uh, uh, new, you know, ideal and the new, uh, tech, uh, you know, the uh, strategy, I get us everything very fast and very accurate. Anybody have a question? And that's pretty much uh, the first topic. And uh, also we did something, and uh, you cannot always use the manufacturing solution. Somebody will complain. So we try to do uh, some uh, uh, real simulations, like peanuts. I don't know, uh, maybe this is, uh, <laughs> maybe not peanuts. So you can see that, so uh, we have a fluid inside, and uh, in this uh, funny shape, and uh, just a uh, combination of different uh, uh, elementary, uh, elementary uh, interfaces. And you can see that, at least we observe, uh, so you are uh, in the dusty uh, stocks company. So the fluid uh, tends in the direction of the elongated direction in the ma major axis, and which is makes sense for many physical problems, right? And then uh, the referee asks us, uh, to do what happened if at the corner, and if you have a if you have a curve, so this is a Darcy's law, and you will see the uh, you know the fluid separation, and the, the, the resolution is not very high. Otherwise, you can see very clearly. And this is a, a time-dependent problem. So uh, we add uh, uh, the flux from the boundary and as the sign and the function. So, so every uh, two pi time, they, they change that. But uh, what I wanted to show you, you know, this is a method capture. Uh, the you know the corner effect very well. You know, uh, 
it's very difficult to do ther uh, theoretically. So you, yeah. 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 Not right. Not right. Yes. And when you have corners like that, do you still get second order accuracy? No, we didn't check. We don't. Uh, for this one, we don't have a. Uh, uh, I don't think we get a second order. And uh, but the first order is uh, in general. Th that's a corner. And uh, I have some idea on how to deal with the corner, but uh, we we haven't tried to implement. So you have to uh, subtract the singularity. Okay, and uh, so they, uh, I did uh, many particles and uh, many different uh, uh, probabilities and uh, uh, you, you can do the uh, permutation analysis. You can uh, see uh, the computational results agree with the permutation result. And uh, so this one we uh, recently added the uh, anisotropic effect. So you can see that uh, in one side you have a matrix, so the direction is more these directions. But uh, if you have a different uh, uh, you know the direction, so they can change the direction. So this is a 45 degree, <coughs> and here it's more like a, you know the uh, you know uh, horizontal, and this is more uh, vertical. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first topic. Do I have a time to to do the second one? <laughs> and uh, so this one, the idea is uh, you know uh, by introducing uh, some augmented variables. So it's uh, similar to the boundary integral method, except that we don't need the boundary uh, equations. There are a lot of uh, interesting topics uh, still going on. I talk to somebody sometimes, uh, how do we know the short complement and what's the best uh, preconditioning strategy? Okay, the second one is also very interesting. And uh, when I was uh, uh, in Western Washington and uh, you know, uh, uh, Randy and uh, sometimes uh, King Gilbert uh, taught us to find a different uh, classes. And when you go to Poisson equations, you know the five point stencil and the central Laplace, you only get a second order, right? But uh, the second order, uh, you know, the, uh, if you go to further, you can go to fourth order, and that's for Poisson equation, and using the operator uh, splitting dimension by dimension, and uh, so you have a, four, a fourth order spin. I, I think it's uh, uh, it's uh, here. So the everything, uh, this is the fourth order for the u, and then you uh, kind of shift some width into the, uh, you know, the averages for the uh, fourth. You know, if you just do the U itself, it's very difficult uh, to get a fourth order and uh, without uh, a large sensor. So that's why you have to do uh, operating to shift uh, some uh, operator to F. So that's a, a standard one. But uh, you know, uh, what happens if you have a, you know, the uh, bound condition, okay? And uh, what happens if you have a flux bound condition? So what do you mean by flux bound condition? That's a Lohmann bound condition and a Robin bound condition. Uh, so the you know uh, since we have a uh, uh, you know number of graduate students, and uh, I wanted the several PhD committees, and they talk about a high order method for Helmholtz equations, and I said uh, you know you have a very high in the interior, and how about uh, in the boundary, and then they don't have an answer even though uh, the advisors are expert in that area, and then uh, you know I thought that this is something we should be done in long time. It's a, a fundamental mathematics problem, so I did a little uh, research uh, search. And uh, I find, uh, uh, you know, fourth order, uh, not many people doing that. And uh, there's a guy, uh, a captain, uh, I think he's uh, from India, and uh, he did uh, uh, many papers on uh, mostly in the interior. Okay, so that's why I get interested. That's uh, something, uh, you know, how do I find the problem by do going to the somebody's talk, and then I find that this is a natural question. You get a, a fourth order in the interior, then the, you know, on the boundary we are destroy a fourth order accuracy, right? And uh, so they, uh, you know, the but the, uh, you know, high order compact scheme is very important because uh, if we do the three dimension, you cannot uh, get the h to be very small. So you need, uh, you know, the in the uh, kind of for coarse mesh, large h, you get an accurate result. And uh, for the Helmholtz equation, you, you know, if a wave number is uh, large, you will get oscillations. And uh, how do you uh, capture or, uh, you know, the uh, Kind of like uh, oscillations. That's another purpose. And uh, for high dimension, you are, uh, you have a memory restrictions because uh, you go to three dimension. You know you have many many variables. And if you use uh, second order, you have h have to be small enough. And uh, uh, the other things is all very important for uh, physics. And when we do the anisotropic, if we do the five point stencil, you, you know the uh, I saw many talks when they talk about the Hedy Shaw and the bifurcation. They get in in x and y direction because uh, 
the stencil is five in x y direction. They don't have a forty five degree. But if you uh, use a high order compact scheme, you use nine point stencil. It's more uh, average. So that's very important. Okay, and this is a slide from uh, uh, Hesterman, and he used to be brown, but now I think he moved again, right? And the Netherlands or something. He's in the brown, I think. Uh, yes. And uh, he has uh, several slides. I just uh, choose two slides. And one of the motivation to get a high order and uh, you know, uh, to relieve the bottleneck of the memory for the modern, uh, even you know, computers. You know, some people ask me, these days we have a powerful computing, but you do three dimensions, and so many uh, you know, the buildings, the buildings are unknown. And you cannot take an H very large. And uh, uh, I mentioned this already, uh, you know, the, for the interior, and uh, this is uh, uh, you know, the fi uh, finite difference stands of the U. And this is for F. Okay, so if you look at the matrix, it's, uh, the method is stable because uh, uh, the coefficient matrix is going to be N matrix. So it's diagonal dominant, it's uh, irreducible, and uh, the diagonal is one sign, and the off diagonal is uh, another sign. So you, you can get the uh, error analysis if it's uh, uh, in the N matrix. But what happened uh, if we have a Helmholtz, Helmholtz equation? And uh, so the, in the interior is okay because you can treat the uh, K squared U as an F. So interior, the Poisson equation, uh, almost uh, the same as the uh, uh, Helmholtz equation, except that you will not get the convergence result for Helmholtz equation. Because the Helmholtz uh, uh, equation can get the eigenvalues, so then the system equation is a single, right? So when you do the analysis, you always do the generalized uh, Helmholtz equation, which means uh, you have good, uh, uh, you know, KU term. And, but if you have a, uh, in a flux bound condition, then you use the point from here. You don't have anything from here. So that's why you have a uh, trouble. And that's, uh, I think that's uh, worth uh, for research. And I think that's uh, a fundamental problem. OK, at least some uh, literature. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, start with the research with a different uh, uh, literature search. And uh, the oldest one probably is uh, by, uh, I don't know uh, whether it's the first, uh, by these two people. And they get fourth order and uh, for three dimension. And uh, also, the, uh, if you have a Neumann bounding condition, we said uh, all are better. And we only get, uh, they only get a third order. So they have a numerical result and no analysis. I don't know whether that's the oldest one. And the probably yes. And then they have uh, like a three dimension. And uh, so this is 97. And uh, so this is my colleague. I mentioned I went to uh, several committees uh, of his PhD student. And uh, uh, no, uh, this is my colleague. This is uh, from uh, University of Israel, and uh, they, they did a lot of work. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's no uh, formal method and for fourth order method and compact on the boundary. And uh, so then I, I thought that, you know, they uh, took it some while. And, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, elementary technique will work. So I use this example, uh, Poisson equation, and uh, we have a, a you know, a Robin bound condition. So in other words, uh, this is the boundary, and uh, this is the interior. And the interior, we have a uh, uh, you know, well-known uh, fourth order method, so there's no problem. And uh, then, what do you mean by uh, you know, compact scheme? So that means uh, you only use uh, nine-point stencil in uh, two dimensions. And the three dimensions, sometimes you use uh, 17 points, and sometimes you use uh, 29, uh, 27 points, right? And uh, so the, it's a media combination of the uh, solution and the greater points. And then we put uh, some kind of average of the F. And uh, then uh, also I add some kind of like uh, put the bounding condition all together. So that I think almost all the compact scheme can be written this form. Then I say, okay, and I want this uh, scheme to be as accurate as possible. So I just take a polynomials and minimize the local truncation error. Uh, correct? And that's exactly what I did. But if I did that, then you get everything uh, to be zero because the zero, we are everything becomes zero, so it doesn't work. So then, uh, then I look at the standard, uh, uh, you know, high order scheme. So the you know the when the average f should be uh, you know equals one. So which means if f equal one, you should get the exact solution, right? So then I add this uh, constraint, and then uh, so what I did here, and uh, I suppose uh, I can extend the f, and to one greater level. So that's, uh, that's what I did. And uh, now, uh, so for example, take uh, this point, 
and how many uh, degree freedom I have. So for you, you cannot use the other side. So I only have a six. But now I suppose I have nine F. So I have nine F. So I take this point as an example. And then I have a bound condition and a three. So all together, how many? Uh, so they, I think I count the next, uh, next time. So this is, uh, you know, after I do this one, I solve the new, uh, you know, solve this linear system equations. Then I in impose the M matrix condition. The reason because, uh, um, did I have come to the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, unknowns? Yeah, here, yes. So I have a six uh, coefficients for the U and a nine for the F because I suppose I can send it the F. Then I have a three uh, for, uh, you know, the bond condition. So all together, how many? 18. Okay, let me ask a uh, uh, graduate student. So if you want this, uh, a uh, scheme to be fourth order accurate. So in other words, uh, at least uh, it should be uh, exact for polynomials of upper degree of a four. And how many of there? How many for a two dimension? And a three dimension actually can be have more freedom. So that's, uh, I think uh, that's uh, uh, 15, right? Uh, so the 15, then I have uh, one constraint here. So that means that I have uh, uh, one constraint. So I have uh, uh, 18 uh, coefficients. I have uh, 16 uh, constraints. So in general, you get an uh, infinite number of solutions. And uh, the solution might be complicated because we get the uh, uh, underdetermined coefficients method. And uh, so what do we do? And uh, actually, uh, I use many methods. I just use SVD. And SVD, you want to give you the best solution. And uh, uh, U1 is uh, uh, most stable. So the, you know, I just show you one uh, particular solution. So this is a, a fourth order. And uh, you can see that that's for U. And that's for F. And that's uh, for the uh, Royman bound condition. It's very similar to the goes to point method. But uh, here, I have a theoretical proof. It's a fourth order accurate. And uh, it's a matrix. And uh, so the local truncation error actually is uh, on the interior is uh, h to the fourth. On the boundary and the base, uh, uh, the least is h to the cubic. So I get a total of four is the fourth order. And that's actually the idea. And of course, uh, I can uh, go further. But uh, I, I probably don't want to spend too much time. Anybody have any questions? And that's the idea. And that's the uh, forms with the, you know, the earlier work by uh, some people from 1980s. So that's why. If we don't extend the F, you only get the uh, uh, third order. Here, I extended the F to get the third order. So I just go uh, very quickly. And uh, uh, here are some details to, you know, uh, just to tell expansion, you want the fourth order to be accurate. So you have to expand the, all the fourth order uh, derivative terms. And then you collect the terms. And uh, so that's a system equation. And uh, it's uh, underdetermined. So we have this uh, uh, theorem. So uh, you want you suppose the uh, you know the enough regularity in order to guarantee and the fourth order accuracy. And uh, so the uh, I show you uh, one example, and uh, this one is more interesting because I can take a case very large, and uh, I do this for uh, Helmholtz equation. So the wave number and uh, k squared is about two thousand. So it's a pretty large. So you can see that I get a very uh, clean second order accuracy, and uh, in the infinite norm. So this is a, uh, uh, you know, if I know the flux bound condition, and this is a Robin. And, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, so the, I, I plot the uh, true solution and the error. So the once uh, you have a large error, you do see some oscillations, but the, uh, you know, order is, uh, uh, you know, accurate to the h to the fourth. So that's uh, pretty nice. And, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, Okay, I just, uh, this is three dimension. So I mentioned that, you know, in these days, you, you, it's better also to do three dimensions. Uh, so what happened if we do not want, uh, uh, if we do not want to extend the F, then you, you, in other words, you, you lose uh, three degree freedom. So you don't have the uh, additional F. And the idea is the same. And uh, so in this case, uh, uh, you know, in general, you don't get a full order. So we satisfy two equations, I satisfy, uh, satisfy x4 and two fourth. So in other words, uh, I got the uh, super, uh, super third, and that's exactly what we did. And uh, so uh, in order to 
uh, enforce the A matrix property uh, for theoretical purpose, I enforce the uh, change to optimization problem. So in other words, I wanted the coefficients because I have a more degree freedom. And uh, I wanted to the sign to be uh, one sign and the uh, off diagonal to be one sign. So that's uh, what I did. So after optimization, okay? And uh, I think I skip uh, the rest. And uh, just uh, go to the, you know, the, actually the, I did use the maple. And uh, to calculate the coefficient, it's uh, very difficult. But if you don't know uh, maple, you just get uh, some numbers. And uh, we also did the uh, anisotropic uh, uh, PD, uh, you know, if equations. So, so actually, I did, uh, you know, let me ask questions. Uh, you know, if uh, you're familiar with the method, and whether you have a fourth order uh, method, yes. But uh, how about the bond condition? Uh, uh, y uh, yes or no? So in general, you get, uh, uh, you know, right now, uh, all the answer is yes. So we now we have a fourth order uh, with uh, uh, Poisson and uh, all the bond conditions. And uh, for Hermos equation, also yes. And for diffusion and advection equation, yes. But uh, for diffusion and uh, advection equation, we suppose uh, uh, you know, the coefficient is a constant. Why is that? Anybody can answer? So I said that my method is good for a constant coefficients. Anybody have an answer for that? The reason, if it's a variable coefficients, then you have to do this every time. Then it's time consuming. If it's a constant coefficient, I just do once. And that's the main uh, idea, but uh, you can apply it for variable coefficients. Uh, okay, and uh, so the, uh, the conclusion uh, also, uh, we have this one. If f, you do not want to ex extend the f, but the f extension is very easy. And you just uh, need to do second order. If you don't want to do f, you get the super third convergence for the solution. Okay, uh, so the, uh, the, then I go back to the, uh, the first topic. And I have a new idea to solve the coupling problem. And for both the stocks and uh, Darcy and the never stocks and Darcy, and by introducing some uh, you know, variables, interface variables, and have some uh, uh, theoretical analysis. OK, thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to take your questions. So I think I'm uh, good on time.